Would a crash like that total your car? It's called an offset crash, and for years here on Dateline, we've been showing you the results for all kinds of cars. Tonight, some of the most expensive cars on the road. At these prices, you're getting the best in style and performance, but are you also getting the best in safety? Here's Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson with a Dateline Consumer Alert. Ignition switch is on. Right, that is correct. Main power. Can you give me yacht as far please? Main on. You're right. inside the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety Crash Test Facility, where engineers are moments away from launching a brand new BMW into a barrier at 40 miles per hour. It's the BMW 328i, a $39,000 car that is about to be crushed in a split second. The question this test is trying to answer, if this were a real person behind the wheel, would he survive? You're about to find out. Looks good. We see uh, very little buckling here. Within minutes after the crash, Institute President Brian O'Neill and his team of engineers download injury data from the dummy. We're using the dummy as a surrogate for the human. We're recording forces on the dummy. And those forces from the crash show no serious injuries. Incredibly, a real person would have walked away from this wreck. Let's watch it again using the Institute's slow motion films. The dummy went square into the airbag, came back. The injury measures were low. This was almost a flawless performance. This safety cage has remained essentially intact. You see how well it's remained intact. Look at the windshield. How many vehicles have you tested where the windshield stayed almost intact? This is very, very unique. I think it's probably happened one other occasion. I think I can guess the rating. This car got a good rating and a best pick. Best pick. The BMW 328i is the best performer in its class, mid-size luxury cars. But there are four more cars left to crash. Luxury models from Cadillac, Audi, Saab, and Volvo, ranging in price from $35,000 to more than $41,000. How will they hold up? We'll show you in a moment. But first, why does the Institute crash cars? Our mission is to find ways to reduce deaths, injuries, and property damage from motor vehicle crashes. We look at human factors, environmental factors, and we also look at vehicle factors. The multi-million dollar institute is funded by insurance companies whose bottom line mission is to save money by reducing the amount of damage claims filed by car owners. All of the cars tested by the Institute, of course, do meet or exceed government safety standards. The government tests cars head on into a flat wall at 35 miles per hour. The four spread evenly across the front of the car. But the Institute test is different. It runs an offset test. The offset crash test simulates what would happen if two cars, each traveling at 40 miles an hour, hit just as these cars front end to front end, just off center. It's as if you drifted over the center line into the path of an oncoming car. The 40 mile an hour frontal crash that we run represents the severity at which many belted occupants in real world crashes are dying or sustaining serious injuries. The Institute buys all of its cars right off dealers' lots. Dateline has no say on how they're chosen, tested, or evaluated. The Institute rates them as good, acceptable, marginal, or poor. We already showed you the top-ranked BMW 328i. Main battery voltage is... Now, let's look at the brand-new Volvo S80, the biggest seller of the group at $38,600. It looked like a good example of a dummy movement or dummy kinematic, square into the airbag and pretty much square into the head restraint. A little off center, but not seriously so. No serious injuries to the head, neck, chest, or legs. Again, the compartment or safety cage held together extremely well. The Volvo also gets the Institute's highest rating. Good, but no best pick, and here's why. There was some evidence that the dummy's hands had been exposed to hot gases from the inflating airbag. I suspect most people wouldn't even realize there are hot gases. Well, all airbags are inflated with hot gases. The question is, where do those gases go and how hot are they? 
O'Neill says additional testing done for the Institute indicates the airbag gases in the Volvo S80 have the potential to cause minor burns on the hands of a real person. In response to those tests, Volvo says it will redesign the airbag for the next model year. The hot gases that we saw coming out here close to a driver's hands, they're going to move the exhaust or vent holes up here so they'll be away from the driver. So here we have the old holes, the new holes. Volvo also says it will adjust the airbag sensors in the S80 after an airbag deployed by mistake in one of the Institute's low-speed bumper tests. While there's no fix for either of these problems in S80s already on the road, O'Neill says current owners shouldn't be alarmed. In a high-speed crash, if the only thing you get are some minor burns on your wrists, that's a small price to pay. Now the Cadillac Catera, a $38,000 car. Well, first appearances aren't too bad. There's some buckling here, but it's not major. Dummy readings for the Katera also show no serious injuries. We have a little bit more intrusion into the compartment. It's still held together pretty well, but not quite as good as the other two vehicles. However, O'Neill likes a subtle safety feature in the Katera that could make a big difference in a crash. Here we have a nice, padded, smooth, knee impact area so when the knee goes into this area it's not likely to get even minor injuries a good feature the cadillac katera also gets the institute's highest rating good this is the saab 95 price tag just over thirty five thousand dollars the steering column doesn't appear to have moved very much that looks like it stayed pretty much in position which is good but a closer look at the dummy readings reveals a problem. How's it look? His right upper tibia looks high. What kinds of injuries are we talking about? If a human experienced the same forces, they would have most likely a fractured leg, maybe even multiple fractures of the leg. But Saab told Dateline the Institute's findings don't take into account real life reactions to impending collisions. Saab says in 50% of crashes, the driver's right foot is on the brake pedal, not the accelerator where it is in the Institute's test. So the automaker designed a special breakaway brake pedal, which lessens the impact of a crash on the lower leg and foot. During a crash, uh, this pedal uh, actually breaks away so is hanging loose. O'Neill likes the safety feature. Nonetheless, the Saab 95 is marked down for the broken leg and misses out on the Institute's top rating. Instead, it gets an acceptable. The final car in this round of testing is also the most expensive. This Audi A6 sells for more than $41,000. That foot is twisted a little, but push sideways. Dummy readings show possible injuries to both legs in this crash, and the Institute also marks down for potential problems that might be more serious with a different size dummy. In this crash, O'Neill says, the steering column was driven back far too much. That means there's much less space for the airbag and the seat belt to do its job, which is to keep you away from this hard structure that's underneath the airbag. So the Audi A6 also gets the Institute's second highest rating acceptable. In a letter to Dateline, Audi says the A6 has an excellent occupant protection record based on real life highway statistics. And Saab told us its 9.5 is subjected to over 40 test configurations during development and that Saab occupants have lower than average personal injury rates. General Motors, maker of the Cadillac Catera, says its own internal tests are more comprehensive than the Institute's, addressing a wide range of crash conditions. GM also says the Institute's ratings are based on just one very severe crash test. Is one crash enough to decide how you should rank an automobile? One crash is sufficient in this respect. It is a very good assessment of the way the vehicle will perform in certain kinds of severe frontal crashes. Engineers for BMW, maker of the top-rated 328i, say the Institute's test complements its own testing. We think the offset test is uh, very representative of what happens in the real world, and uh, we designed for it. All the cars in this round were rated good or acceptable. But remember, they're all expensive luxury cars.
do you have to spend a lot of money to get safety? Absolutely not. We find good performing vehicles in all classes that we've tested now. O'Neill says the newest safety technology usually appears first in the luxury cars, then gets passed on to the less expensive models. Do you see a day when uh, you will no longer be in the offset crash test business? There's absolutely no question that I can see a few years from now that we will be giving up this test program because we will reach the point where, if not all, virtually all products will be good performers. That's when we can declare victory. Brian O'Neill says in addition to the Institute's test results, you should also check out the government's before you buy a car. For information from both the Institute and the government, visit our website. You'll find results on all vehicles the Institute has tested, including cars, minivans, SUVs, and trucks. The address is dateline.msnbc.com.